Are you ready? Okay. I'm here. Boy, this is a short press conference. <laughs> Hogan. A lot of what you talked about today has to do with investments like the investments we've been making over the last few years. You also tout it as the most conservative budget uh, since the Great Recession. How are both of those things possible at the same time? Growth in the economy. Uh, and, and, well, I'm... Part of the reason that it's less, because we got less revenue, because we've been doing record tax, you know, those record tax cuts show up in revenue coming in. I mean, the, you look at our economy and record personal income growth, but you keep cutting taxes, uh, it's it's going to have an impact, and that it, it, so that's why it's pretty simple. But it's it is a pretty, you know, when when I go through the budget process. Early on, you know, in October, November, I look at those, and then I get to the bottom right-hand corner about the percent increase, and uh, a lot of it's a, a lot of what you'll see that Alex will present to JFAC uh, to, starting tomorrow uh, will be budgets that are pretty, uh, but there's still decision units in there from from the agencies. New, and we trimmed a few things back, but for the most part. Uh, it's just uh, record growth from the uh, economy and people paying taxes, and that's part of it. But they're not paying as much taxes because we've got the rates down. Go ahead. Governor, why did you decide to prioritize school facility funding uh, with this limited growth budget? Well, I mean, the it's <laughs> it, it's always been an issue for me. Uh, you know, and there's there's some. I read something just this week about maybe a, a constitutional amendment proposal. But uh, you know, we can leverage the money we've got and and address a lot of those unmet needs. But you know, if you take the constitutional language about a uh, public school uh, sufficiency of public schools, uh, right now, you know, we were, <clears throat> I think, we're dead last in state general fund support per square foot of schools and this you know two billion dollars did I mention two billion dollars uh, uh, two billion dollars uh, moves us to 39th uh, but it's but it, it will send the right signal and it'll help uh, and and the other thing is what the way the property tax is I think it'll help some of these districts uh, pass their bonds because the, the bonds will be smaller because of the state support Governor, thanks so much for doing this and taking the time to visit with us after the speech today. I know it's a busy day. I also wanted to ask about the school facility initiative and how you'll work with the legislature to implement that. After you left us last Thursday, a number of the legislators talked about wanting to place spending caps on the budget, uh, really scrutinize the budgets that are going to come out of JPEC this year. And I just know that when you repeat $2 billion, uh, several of our friends in the legislature and some of the new members of JPAC will have questions about the state's ability to sustain that $2 billion. And so I'm just curious about your well, strategies. For well, the $2 billion's over 10 years. Yeah, for sure. So that's, I mean, and, you know, it not dissimilar with our bridge issue. We put $200 million a year into bridges last year, 200 this year, we're going to do 200. That, we intend for that to get the locals caught up to where the locals can then now we'll see how that plays out, but this is similar. This is to help the schools get caught back up because they're so far behind on maintenance and, and facility construction. So, you know, you, whether it's ongoing or not, that will be up <coughs> to a different group at a different time and, and, you know, some of the sideboards that this legislature may put on it. But I, I see it very similar to what we're doing with local road, departments, counties, and cities, by helping them get caught up by their bridges, is help the school districts get caught up on their schools. Thank you. Uh, question about the secure mental health facility. Um, so you've got money uh, in your budget recommendations for the facility. However, right now, as you know, it's pretty understaffed when it comes to uh, mental health professionals. How are you going to ensure that just having the building is Well, I, you know, I, I will 
readily admit I don't know the details about the total staffing. I'm just trying to get this thing built. It was interesting, I was talking to Mark who runs Veterans Services and we got a new veterans uh, home in Post Falls and it's not fully open because of a nursing shortage. Every long-term care, skilled nursing, our, our crisis centers. And that's why launch is so important. The number one priority for the state board is healthcare jobs. The number one priority for launch is healthcare. We just gotta have more nurses, more CNAs. And then in a lot of those behavioral health areas, you gotta have people that are skilled up even more than that. But every state's having that problem. And that's why we're excited about our, our uh, launch and what we're doing with our residencies, uh, what we're doing in the behavioral health field. But you're right, it, I guarantee it's gonna be an issue. Um, but it's, uh, uh, I don't know, did Alex talk about uh, the CEC proposal? Not really. I'm getting, checking to see if I get it. Well, the budget's out, but uh, uh, we, we proposed a, a CEC, but, a, but it's got an add-on for nursing jobs because we recognize that. That's one of the, there's two areas, nursing and what's the other one? I can't remember, but... Uh, but, but the health care, we know for my state agencies, including corrections, that, that we just have, we're going to have to pay more. So that's in the, in the when we present our CEC uh, recommendation, that's one of the areas we're going to have to plus up. But journalists and Boise State Radio are right there behind it. So. Governor, since it didn't come up this morning, do you mind spending just a minute talking about the CN, uh, CEC recommendation that you'll be presenting. Well, it, well, it's three percent with two plus ups, and it's are you are you are you frantically looking? No, frantic is not the right. Word. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, there's two places we're going to do a plus up. So, but you know, we did that we did that years ago for engineers. Uh, uh, we had to do it uh, ITD. Uh, we had to, and occasionally we have to do some work there. Yes. Well, Why is that well, we did that last year, didn't we, Emily? We put uh, we did that last year uh, to get them up, and then I I can't remember what Congress Congress had a drop, drop debt, and I don't think they did it. I think it's in their CR, or it's proposed to be in their uh, CR. Uh, but you know, we're obviously uh, we're we're going to put some more money into our firefighting fund, but we got a pretty good balance in there because we've had two pretty good fire years. Uh, so obviously uh, the firefighting pay is gonna be, but we, we plus that up last year, so. And the other IT, that's right, thanks. Yes. Well, the, there's, we're, we're sweeping sales tax revenue in 125 million a year and 125 million a year, uh, 125 on the construction and 75 on the maintenance. Uh, so that, so it's, it's, you know, 200 million equal 2 billion, depend upon, but the, the critical part of it is the bonding. Uh, Idaho Housing and Finance will do the bonding and, and, uh, and you know they're they're very good at what they do, uh, issuing bonds and you know hopefully and our bonds are still meeting with. Uh, I think when I check with Alex last week, we think we can get these bonds for three percent, which is, uh, but that's just because of our incredible credit rating. Yes. Well, there was nothing in the speech about that, unless I slept through that part. Uh, 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 but, you know, the Medicaid budget that Alex will present is, and the budget book's out. Uh, I'm sure you'll all take it home and read it tonight. Uh, the budget book's out, but the Medicaid budget is just, uh, is just a small increase. But there's a couple things we got going for us that are helping. Um, uh, the upper payment limit, uh, there's two, three different areas, the upper payment limit, uh, that it's allowing us 
uh, uh, some funding to keep that uh, Medicaid at a flat budget. So. It must be in the budget highlights. Yes, yeah, the wrong guy. Go ahead, Logan. Governor, one of the things you spoke about in the speech was joining the, I don't even get the name wrong, but the governor's council on the, the, the balanced budget amendment. Can you tell us? I'm, you know, I'll bet those guys, I bet Congress runs out and balances, does it probably with me saying that. Well, I've actually got a meeting tomorrow or the next day with, and I, I've talked to the, matter of fact, we, uh, Senator McKenzie proposed it in the Senate 15 or 16 years ago. And uh, so I've, I've got a file on it and, and I kept, they said, well, if we just talk about it, then Congress will do it. Well, that hasn't been working. We gotta get, we gotta get closer. And there's still a theory uh, that if there's enough states and if the states get close, Congress will want to use their powers of the purse instead of some constitutionally mandated power of the purse, and they'll do the right thing. I don't care how we get there. We've just got to change the trajectory of the federal debt. And it's, you know, we are, as, as I said uh, during the state of the state, uh, there's a lot of states that uh, didn't, you know, they took some of the, ARPA money and infrastructure money and didn't do what we did and, and became dependent upon it. And they're in much worse shape. Some of these states are, are swinging from a, the bigger states are swinging from a $30 billion surplus to an $80 billion deficit. Uh, but it's mainly because they weren't structurally sound. They, they, they aren't doing what we're doing, which is we're forecasting surpluses for the next five years. That's something that uh, we started uh, five, four, four years ago, was budgeting out for the five years that people talked about it, but now it's, and, and Alex will present that to the Joint Committee. Well, we're obviously Superintendent Critchfield, uh, she and I talk about this all the time, and it's, uh, you know, and, and one of the things, and it, it ties to launch, because in, in some of these schools that didn't have the better sign up on launch, their career counselors were doing other counseling. And so that's why we're kind of giving them uh, discretion on it. We want them to do the career counseling, but they also, uh, I, I was in school one time and their sign up wasn't very good. And I says, well, well kind of what happened? Says, you know, we, this is a tragedy, but they had a, they had a suicide and then another one and they just moved all their counselors over to doing that. And we, we obviously have to do more, but more counselors will, will be a big part of that. And Superintendent Critchfield has also got an initiative on it. It'll all, it'll all tie together. So. I haven't seen it. I didn't know anything about it until you, you're breaking news. You just it. Well, no, I was talking about a, co a federal constitutional amendment, not a state constitutional amendment. So that's, uh, uh, no, that's, I, I, uh, what I mentioned in the state of the state is the language that exists in our constitution today about public school sufficiency. Yeah. And that, that, uh, uh, that lawsuit is still pending. We, it was kind of put in abeyance by a series, and this was back when I was in the Senate, a series of about eight or 10 different actions that we took on school safety. You know, we've got a provision right now, and in fact, one of the schools that I talked about in my speech, if it gets in real bad shape, and they, and, and they get, it gets flagged as an unsafe school shut down, the State Board of Education becomes a school board, they build a school, no input from the locals, the locals have to pay for it, and then after they build it, they give it back to them. It, 
that's a hammer that's in that, which is one of those bills to address that sufficiency. And the only place it ever w happened is in Plummer. Uh, and uh, we'd build a new school for Plummer and uh, the, the uh, executive director of the State Board of Education was their school board chairman. That is not, that should be a last result. We shouldn't, but that was, that was one of those eight or 10 bills on school sufficiency. But we're getting so far behind in, in school facilities that I worry in some of the constitutional people that look at education sufficiency also worry that that's gonna be a problem. Zero debt. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna dedicate sales tax to it. Just like, it, it, it's similar to what we do today with Techum, where when we started collecting sales tax on online sales, there was, there was a US Supreme Court that says that, that if you buy something at, uh, at Clark's store and pay 6% sales tax, or you buy something from Brad's online, you didn't have to pay tax to me, you had to pay tax to him. So there's Supreme Court ruling, so we dedicated that tech, that money first to a tax fund and then to transportation. We're taking and dedicating sales tax money uh, to pay for those bonds. So it's not, there will be bonding, but it's just like you getting a, 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 a big raise uh, on, on a long-term employer and being able to go out and, and get a mortgage because you've got that, you've got a guaranteed source of money coming in. And if you don't have a guaranteed source of money or bonding, uh, our, our, the, the, the bond bankers won't like it. We got a guarantee. They'll, they'll be fine with it. So. Has the state leveraged more of those sales tax revenues for these types of projects, like bonding and the, the legislature directing some of those funds towards schools for facilities? Is there any concern that the state is getting too reliant on sales tax? Well, actually, uh, Logan, I think if you look at it, uh, the bond levy equalization was part of that, and this will supplant part of bond levy equalization, but we are very cognizant of that, that, that we don't over uh, commit income tax, sales tax, uh, fill in the blank, and, and because, uh, you know, if you, and there was, there've been proposals, and here comes the answer man to the back of the room, there've been proposals to do more in bond levy equalization, but both bond levy equalization and the new revenue for school facilities will be sales tax, isn't that right? Just nod yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question that I didn't have the answer to? Medicaid work requirements. Oh, Medicaid work requirements. It's a waiver request. Oh, it's a waiver request from CMS. Well, I, I mean, you got to see them. Uh, it's no secret that uh, a couple of the states that did that are the chickens are coming home to roost. And and but I've said that all along that I was for school choice. But anything I think quote from me is anything significantly uh, 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 detracts from long term ongoing funding to public school. I'd have concern with, and that's that's where I was. That's where I still am. You, you should have paid more attention about accountable. What, 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 what was that great line that I had in there, Emily? A, transparent, accountable funding for uh, public schools. I, I, I mean, it, it's, to me, it's a, you can start it off, but what happens, and what's happened to some of these states, all of a sudden you find out, and believe me, they're gonna be, as there are today, there are gonna be some private schools and some, they're doing just a great job. But they're gonna look around at somebody else doing a terrible job and going, 
you know, what are we going to do about that? And if you don't have any sideboards on it, it's it's an issue. So, what sideboards would you like to see? I, I, I mean, the sideboards that we have right now, Alex, uh, I, I appointed Alex uh, at, on a temporary basis at the Charter School Commission, and we've got a few charter schools that the Charter School Commission is wrestling with where they don't think there's enough accountability, and so we're we're trying to put the accountability into charter schools as we should, just like we do public schools and anything else. It, it's the taxpayer's money. What about homeschoolers? Uh, the homeschoolers are different, but there's homeschoolers that do, uh, and, and of course the, the only thing we do for homeschoolers is, is the uh, empowering parents, and we've tightened that up a little bit, so. We don't give them other than empowering parents and and some of those empowering parents families are kind of in school and kind of out of school and and they were some of them are still getting over from the from the uh covid Well, well, constitutional amendment, I don't even get to vote on until it, I show up to Emmett at the polling place. If a bill were to come across your desk that said uh, an, an initiative at the general election has to get two-thirds, would you be supportive of that? I think I did that one time. I, I think I... They have indeed. Ballot, which you have vetoed in the past, but this would be different to where it was on the ballot rather than 50% plus one and they want to make it harder to pass once it's on the ballot. Would you be supportive? I, I, I'd have to see the details. All right, thank you. Yes? Uh, so we know that uh, certain legislators are working on um, talking about uh, our abortion ban and, and including more um, language to help women who um, need Well, well, both uh, uh, Chairman Crane and even in the last week, uh, Speaker Moyle have talked about, uh, you know, looking at, yeah, there's, there's a lot of moving parts there because there's court cases that are, have things stayed and, and uh, but I, I, I am empathetic to both uh, Chairman Crane and Speaker Moyle's concerns about it, particularly fertility issues. No, I haven't. We haven't made the ballot yet. One more? Emily, you're in charge. I must be doing all right or you'd be dragging me out of here. When's Simon Dye this year? March 25th. No, it, it, uh, what is it? 22nd? The uh, filing date is March 15th. So there might be some things happen post March 15th that don't happen before March 15th. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank All right. You.